Jim Carrey has had his fair share of high-profile romances, but his longest relationship to date was with his first wife, Melissa Carey, formerly known as Melissa Wilmer. They were married before Jim's rise to fame, but it seems that his popularity took its toll on their marriage. You know, when I go to sleep at night, I'm not just a guy going to sleep. I'm two-time Golden Globe winner Jim Carrey going to get some well-needed shut-eye. Since then, Jim's had two failed marriages and an engagement that was broken off with Renee Zellweger, who years later, the actor called the love of his life. As it turns out, Jim hasn't shied away from blaming himself for it all. I feel like um, there's so many things because I've been so busy for so long that I've, important things that I've ignored. Melissa Carey Wilmer first met Jim Carrey in the 1980s when they were both struggling to put food on the table, literally. At the time, Melissa was working two jobs while Jim was making $25 a night making stand-up. They met at the Comedy Store, the very same club that later propelled Jim into stardom. Melissa was a cocktail waitress at the club. On a night of one of Jim's performances, she noticed his weird and wacky comedy routine. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Jim Carrey, and how are you this evening? All righty then. <laughs> she was smitten by his bizarre charm and sense of humor and was immediately hooked. The couple dated for about two years, and at the beginning in 1987, Melissa found out that she was pregnant. The couple were overjoyed and decided to make their love official by getting married in March of that year. Melissa described her sunset ceremony as an absolutely perfect day, adding that she and Jim couldn't stop the tears of joy from welling in their eyes the entire time. Just a few months later, the newlyweds welcomed a daughter into their life, Jane Aaron Carey. Sadly, as Jim's career took off in Hollywood, he struggled to balance his work life and home life. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I see your lips moving, but there's a delay. He was one of the highest paid actors of his time, a comedic legend in the making. And unfortunately, all that pressure that came along with his fame took a toll on his marriage. For their sixth wedding anniversary, Jim rented the ballroom of the Peninsula Hotel. He hired a band and had just one table put in for the couple to dine in privacy. He serenaded her, then flew to Florida the next day to begin shooting for Ace Ventura. However, Melissa claimed that he never came home after that. The couple separated that same year. What followed was a very public, very messy divorce that was finalized two years later, in 1995, after eight years of marriage. Since then, Melissa has stayed far away from the spotlight. Jim Carrey did not pretend to be a saint regarding his separation from Melissa. When asked about his divorce, he was quick to claim fault. Look, I'm a hard guy to live with. I'm like a caged animal. I'm up all night walking around the living room. It's hard for me to come down from what I do. Friends and family seem to agree with Jim's self-assessment. A source close to the funny man told people that Jim can be a hard guy to date and that he desperately needs to be with someone, then just as desperately needs to be alone. It didn't take long for Jim to move on after his split from Melissa, though. In fact, before their divorce was finalized, he'd already started dating his Dumb and Dumber co-star, Lauren Holly. You know, the first shot at Dumb and Dumber, before I even started Dumb and Dumber, I, spelled, I spent 32 years as a total idiot. For a while, people were under the assumption that Jim had cheated on his wife with Lauren, but the actress made things very clear in an interview about her relationship with Jim. They keep calling me a homewrecker. I feel for Melissa, but they were completely apart when Jim and I met. After the filming for Dumb and Dumber wrapped, Carrie and Holly continued to see each other, but this time, Jim felt a little more cautious about the future of their relationship. On the other hand, while they were together, they seemed to be happy. When the couple won Best Kiss at the MTV Movie Awards, he called Holly the sweetest girl in town and swore that he'd slay a dragon for her. In 1996, Jim arrived on the set of Holly's film, A Smile Like Yours, got down on one knee, and proposed to her with a great big sparkly ring. Over the next few months, the couple enjoyed their newlywed bliss. Naturally, with Jim's fame, he and his new wife were constantly bombarded by the paparazzi because they would do things like scale the fence at our house and live in our backyard and take pictures through our window, you know, and weird things like that, or go through our garbage and put in the magazine what was in our garbage. Unfortunately, after just nine months of marriage, Holly filed for divorce with the usual irreconcilable differences. There was no hint as to what could have led to the couple's split. Perhaps Jim had moved on too fast from his first marriage and hadn't given himself enough time to heal after his divorce from Melissa. It's also possible that Carrie's fame and busy work schedule took their toll on his marriage to Holly, just like it had in his first marriage. 
A few years later, Carrie met Renee Zellweger on the set of Me, Myself, and I Read in 1999. They immediately clicked, and Jim fell hard and fast for the actress. However, Renee didn't return his feelings at first. It wasn't until they had finished filming the movie that the actress realized that she had feelings for her co-star. Renee admitted that their relationship was something unexpected and wonderful. She confessed, It was just a really natural thing to want to be around each other, and we didn't see each other for a few months after we finished the picture, or really speak even, and I just noticed his absence significantly. It just felt like, wow, I really miss him. Over the next few years, they appeared on the red carpet together, arm in arm, and it was clear that Jim was totally taken by Renee's beauty, charm, and personality. Things seemed to be going so well for the couple that they even got engaged. For a while, everyone thought that Jim had finally met his match. Sadly, it wasn't meant to be, and by the end of 2000, the couple had called it quits, leaving Jim heartbroken once again. The most surprising thing of all, Gary gave his fans an insight into his romance with Renee in his book titled Memoirs and Misinformation. He confessed that Renee was the great love of my life. She was special to me, very special. I think she's lovely. I don't pine for anybody, it's not that kind of situation. It's just my way of saying that there was a very important thing there, you know, and to recognize that. Since then, the actor has opened up further on his thoughts on love and relationships and admitted that he doesn't believe in fairy tale love. He also claimed that he didn't want to get married again. I don't believe in this fairy tale of staying together forever. 10 years with somebody is enough. In 10 years, you can give a lot of love. Jim went on to have a five-year relationship with Jenny McCarthy. While they were together, the actor joked that he and Jenny are never getting married, but we're never getting divorced, which is fantastic. The couple later split in 2010, and Jim shared in a tweet, I'm grateful for the many blessings we've shared, and I wish her the very best. Carrie's next serious relationship, and probably his most publicized one, ended in tragedy and scandal when his girlfriend, Catriona White, took her own life in 2015. White's estranged husband and mother sued Carrie for wrongful death, and the case was later dismissed. As far as we can tell, it seems Carrie has been living a single life after he called it quits with his most recent girlfriend, Kidding co-star Ginger Gonzaga, in 2019 after just a year of dating. The actor also recently announced his retirement from the movie-making business. That is, unless he finds a script that inspires him to act again. For now, he feels like he's had enough, and he's done enough, and he's content with the way that his life is. He paints to keep himself busy, and he finds solace in his time alone, away from the spotlight. I have, I have a website landing in, uh, in April, and it's, it's called Magic Hour, where I'm going to present some uh, kooky art that is uh, a mix of painting and spoken word that uh, delves into my existential uh, musings. Perhaps he enjoys his time alone, or maybe his history of heartbreak has made him realize that it's not about finding happiness with someone else, but finding happiness within himself.